Uh, my name is Mary Ann Hitt. I am the Executive Director of Appalachian Voices, and our mission is to bring people together to solve the big environmental problems facing the Central and Southern Appalachian Mountains. Mountaintop removal mining, I'm going to tell you what it is, what the impacts are, and where it's happening, and why those of us who are working on it are very concerned about clean coal. Um, mountaintop removal mining is a form of mining where instead of taking the coal out of the mountain, they take the mountain off the coal. Um, the coal is in the mountain, kind of like layers in a cake, and what they do is they drill holes, um, they fill them with explosives, and blow the mountains up, and shovel everything that's not coal over the side. And it isn't all usually green, but you get the idea. They take that rock and they bury the streams, and to date, um, Oh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,000 miles of streams have been buried. A million acres have been destroyed. Over 470 mountains have been blown up in four states. This is done by huge equipment that does the job that was normally done by many hundreds of people. This is a drag line that is over 20 stories high. And once the coal has been removed, they have to remove everything that isn't coal and they wash it with all these toxic chemicals and this sludge that they leave behind is stored in earthen dams, hundreds of them all throughout Appalachia, some of which are larger than the Hoover Dam. And the coal is shipped out to provide electricity for all of us. Half of our electricity in this country comes from coal. So there are about eight major impacts of mountaintop removal that I want to run over with you briefly. And the first is it's a major environmental justice issue. Um, it's happening in one of the poorest regions of the country. It's wiping out entire communities and entire culture. And as coal production has stayed pretty high in West Virginia, the mining jobs have been on a serious decline. Again, this is highly automated. And you'd think with all of this great wealth in West Virginia, the streets of the coal fields would be paved with gold. But the, there's an area in the middle that's sort of splotchy, and those are the mined areas. And the darkest colors here are the over, it overlaps with the, the poorest areas of you know the whole entire Appalachian region where mountaintop removal is happening the highest rates of poverty it also overlaps with the highest rates of unemployment the lowest levels of high school completion the lowest per capita income it's the one part of our region that's actually losing population so clearly the great wealth that's coming from this is not benefiting the people who live there by and large um, it's also a major environmental health issue. And this is Ed Wiley, who's a grandfather and a former coal miner. And it was actually just about one year ago today that he arrived in Washington, D.C. after walking there from Charleston, West Virginia. And he did that walk to raise awareness about the plight of the children in Marsh Fork Elementary School near where Judy lives in southern West Virginia. This is a picture of the school is at the bottom of that sludge dam that you see. And since this picture was taken, most of the mountains around that sludge dam have been blown up. So not only do you have a sludge dam over a school, you have mountains around it that have now been blown up. And so there's more runoff going into that dam. And then you have around the school a lot of coal dust and rock dust that's making the children and the teachers very sick. Clearly then, this is also a major water clean water issue. Um, this is a spill in the year 2000 in Martin County, Kentucky, when 300 million gallons of sludge broke through into the Big Sandy River, 30 times bigger than the Exxon Valdez oil spill. Very few people heard about it. And this is happening in the headwaters of the drinking water supply of millions of Americans. One of the few global biodiversity hotspots that we have here in North America is right here in this exact same region that the mountaintop removal is happening. And it's especially famous for aquatic biodiversity, crayfish, mussels, um, freshwater fish species. And they are also the most sensitive to all the impacts of mountaintop removal. It's clearly very tied to energy policy, energy use, and climate change. All that carbon dioxide that's in the air warming our planet started out quite a bit of it in the mountains of central Appalachia. Finally, it's a landscape and a land use issue. And if you care about places in this country, then there are a lot of places with coal under them. And if we're willing to blow up some of the oldest mountains on earth, hundreds of them, you have to fear for all the other places in this country that have coal underneath them. So now I want to talk to you about the scale. Um, this is one mountaintop removal mine 
It's huge. It's also very hard to see unless you have the rare opportunity to fly in an airplane over the coal fields of Appalachia. To try to give people a sense of what is happening, these flags at half mast all mark the locations of mountains that have been blown up by mountaintop removal. And you can see from here, this is an online virtual interactive memorial, how close all this is to the eastern United States. And what you're doing now is you're flying into one mountaintop removal mine. This is the Hobet Mine Complex in southern West Virginia. And you kind of get a sense, more or less, that yeah, sure, it looks pretty big. There are a lot of mountains that have been blown up there. And so one of the things we've tried to do to give people a sense of the scale is to overlay the Hobet Mine over places in America that people are more familiar with. This is Manhattan in New York. And that's the Hobet Mine. In the memorial, we also gave each one of these mountains their own page with pictures and video and stories because these are every single one of these mountains is a real place. Every single one of these mountains is some, some mountain that somebody looked at from their front porch and where they hiked around when they were a kid and where they showed the wonders of nature to their children. Judy lived on, her family lived on her land for nine generations before they were forced out. I mean, can you even think about what that's like? Just earlier this year, Google put the National Memorial for the Mountains into Google Earth. So anyone who has Google Earth on their computer can go and see these mountains. There's before and after overlays, and you can read the stories. Uh, the permanent home of the memorial is a website called ilovemountains.org. Obviously, we're concerned about clean coal. Um, and I'm going to go through three concerns that we have. Before I do that, I just want to tell you what is meant by this term, clean coal. Clean coal doesn't have anything to do with the mining process. It has to do with the burning process. And generally what people are talking about is gasification and sequestration. Gasification is the way that you burn it. So normally you're basically burning pulverized coal dust in a traditional coal-fired power plant. What they do with gasification is they're heating up the coal and adding some oxygen and creating a gas that they burn instead. Then it's easier in that process to separate out the carbon dioxide. Once they've separated out the carbon dioxide, they have to do something with it, and the idea is it will be put underground or under the floor of the ocean. And there are some IGCC plants out there in existence in the world today, a few. They're much more expensive to build than traditional coal-fired power plants. There is no large-scale sequestration going on today, and people say it's 20 to 30 years out at the best if it's ever going to happen. This, this is a giant carbon anchor that's slowing down the transition to cleaner forms of energy. And if you look at this next slide from American Electric Power presentation that they gave, they see gasification as a way to keep coal in the mix. We are, global warming legislation is coming down the pike. Carbon taxes, carbon caps, something is coming. The coal industry is trying to stay in the game in a carbon constrained world and they see we believe they see the gasification as a way to do that, and we also believe it's like if you've seen the movie Who Killed the Electric Car, and the way they talk about the hydrogen car is always dangled out there as this possibility at some point in the future that's maybe going to come to pass. And so in the meantime, we don't really have to do anything because we're working on the hydrogen car. We feel that same way about gasification and sequestration. If it's this 20 or 30 years out, we promise coal is going to be totally clean. But for now, guess what's on the drawing boards nationwide? 150 new coal-fired power plants, the vast majority of which will never, will not be gasification plants and have no hopes of sequestering the carbon dioxide. Our second big concern is it's going to have a disproportionate impact on the mountains that really can just not take any more and our communities that cannot take any more. Um, the red line, or, well, the line at the top is Appalachian coal reserves over the years. They are in decline, and as you can see in this slide, um, this is an Energy Information um, Administration in the U.S. government. The, any new mines in Appalachia are going to require more mountaintop removal, deeper mines. Basically, and a National Academy of Sciences report came out recently and said the same thing. More mining, especially in the east, is going to have increasingly severe environmental consequences and increasingly unsafe conditions for miners. This is a technical solution to a political problem, and the political problem is the unchecked power of the coal industry in our government. 
And ultimately, their objective is to get as much coal out of the ground as they can and burn it as cheaply as they can for as close to forever as they can. That is their job. And 30 years ago, we tried to solve this political problem, with, uh, which was at that time strip mining, with the passage of the Surface Mining Act. And this is what we have in Appalachia 30 years later. Ins insane levels of strip mining. This is a picture of the harsh reality of what happens when the coal industry does their business according to our technical fixes. Um, one coal company in Appalachia was just fined for violating the Clean Water Act over six years, 4,000 times. They were violating it 28 times a day. The mound top removal is one of the most powerful wedges that we have in challenging the unchecked power of the coal industry.